hello and welcome to this week's episode of My CP Does Not Define Me, where we focus less on the dis and more on the ability of what we can do. Join us every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, live on www.letgoradio.net and on Facebook Live, where I always say, if you can't be good, be bad, but be good at it. What's up, everybody? It's that time again. It's 2 p.m. on a Wednesday hump. Hey, yeah, that's what day it is. That's what day it is. I'm here to get you through the hump. All right, so today on My CP Does Not Define Me, I have a very close friend and special guest. I'm going to bring her in right now, and there she is. Everything is good. Technology decides to work today. We are live on www.letgoradio.net, and we are live on Facebook. Hi, Mitch Kim. How are you? I'm doing good, DJ. How are you? I am doing well. So you are quite an individual because I, I was making up the, the flyer for this week and I, I'm going to get right into it. I want to, of course, ask my, my first question that I always ask and give you the opportunity to um, introduce yourself and tell our viewers who you are, where you're from, uh, what you want to tell about yourself, that kind of thing. So give us an introduction of who you are and what kind of things you're doing and what's going on and we'll go right from there. Cool. Good morning, world, or good afternoon. My name is Kim, and I have CP, but I'm also a rocking, absolutely fantastic daycare teacher from babies three months to three years. So if I could do it, anybody could kick butt. <laughs> so now you, um, you said you're a daycare teacher. What, um, what got you into working with children, and how did you, how did you get into that? Oh, I started working with kids since I'm since my parents actually did foster care. Mm -hmm. Since I was like 10, 11 years old, I've been around babies since as young as newborns. Okay, up now to you, eight, 18 mm -hmm. years old, so yeah. Oh wow, so you've you've I mean was it was it more of a, you know, babysitting and then kind of going into that and then, you know, branching off from that or or what, have you been in daycares a lot no 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 i actually how it started was because my mom did foster care and i've mm -hmm. dealt with babies almost all my life and then also going into school no one really accepted you know the disabled people mm -hmm. so i had to be around those kind of disabled people right and right. never around normal people quote unquote normal people so i've actually been with disabled kids to normal kids all my life, and I love it. Okay, so I, I've got to ask you, I know the little ones can run around and, and go crazy. How hard is it, you know, um, now you actually can walk with your CP, but I know you have, um, you told me you have orthotic braces, which help you to, to, to be pretty quick. Um, how hard is it keeping up with the little ones and, and, you know, trying not to let them get into everything? Because you work with... Uh, you said up to up to three year olds, correct? Correct. It could okay. be it can be challenging at times when you like when you try to put one um, to relax to do an activity, another one goes running off, and it's like no, 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 it's dangerous. Stay here. You, you can't go over there. You can't touch that. That's dangerous. <laughs> and it's still trying to do it anyway. Yeah, going got you going in twenty seven different directions. Um. How is it like? Do you notice, especially with the with the the toddlers and getting into the one to twos? Do they are they when you when you care for one, are they very clingy and then they want you to care for them too? Is that mm -hmm. you pick him up? Why not pick me up? I want to play too. Yes, it's it could be very challenging at times. That's why my favorite spot is on the rug, and I'm like, you want to come to me? All well and good, but I'm not picking you up. Hmm. So, so how have you adapted, like with the CP that you have, with you know working with your your kids? I know that I know you said sitting on the rug is one way. Uh, you told me another way is I think sitting in a chair. You said to where you have a back to where you can sit up, you know, sit up straight and have yeah. an easier time holding them. 
Yes, it's much easier that way. Okay. Now you're working with, uh, I, I'm not going to say his name, but you're working with a five month old now and he is a cutie. I'll tell you, um, you, you like the, the little bitty, the little bitty ones too, don't you? You're into, you love the little babies. That's kind yeah. of your thing. Yeah. Because they need you more. It's like, I feel like working here. I feel like I'm a second mother. Mm. Well, and, 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 and it's all about, you know, and this is so cool. You having CP and showing the world that like you talked about, you know, you can kick butt too with, with anything that you do. I think it's remarkable to, you know, I, I love little kids. I love little babies. I'm, I'm good. You know, you, you stick me with one and two year olds. I'm like, uh, uh, I'm going to run the other way. Uh, God, they're getting up and running around. They want to pull my chair. Oh, no. What am I going to do? It's going to be that kind of thing. But the little ones, I, I'm not much of changing diapers, but I guess you kind of have to adapt with um, with all of that. So congratulations on that. And um, now you're you're actually upcoming on four years now. With, I uh, have four years. Mm -hmm. In February, at February 6th, I made four years. Wow. So it's coming up quick. I tell you, this... this um, this 2020 has been has been tough, um, especially with everything going on. So now, how do you guys? And I know with with COVID, it's really tough, and you guys are always using safety precautions. And I see you wearing your mask all the time because I know you you took it off here to to do the show. But how how hard is it? Um, you know, to, to, to do the, the COVID protocol and then work with the kids. Do they try to pull the mask off? Is it, is it the whole? Yeah. Yes, they, they try, but they also learn that um, safety distance we're teaching them. And we're also teaching them a new thing, strange danger. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. That's which awesome. Is, which is pretty cool because now like, even if a new person or person they haven't seen in a long time, they come hiding behind us and they're like, no stranger, stranger. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's so right. you're getting the imprint of the stranger danger at a very early age. And that's, that's awesome. Now I, I have um, had a chance to talk with you off camera a lot. We've been friends for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I was really impressed with some of, I mean, you get um, letters and gifts from parents because they're happy that that you're taking care of their children you know from from 8 30 to to five how, how how does that make you feel as an individual that they you know they have so much trust in you it's it's total respect i feel like i've earned it mm -hmm. you know i'm loving my kids i show the parents respect you know they even tell us they're like wow the and they tell up my boss they're like this teacher is amazing. She could do anything. Mm -hmm. You know, he's mm -hmm. like, yes, yes, yes. Like tries to, yes, parents did that. Now you, um, you recently had done, I think you did gifts for the parents for Valentine's day. I know you worked, you know, something for St. Patrick's day. I know you even worked their heritage into their, their gifts. And I love that. I saw some of the, some of the art pro uh, projects that you did with the little ones. Um, mm -hmm. And I think they're, they're absolutely beautiful. You did a, a card recently for the little one that you take care of to his parents. And I thought for Valentine's day, you had his footprints and his handprints and uh, the happy Valentine's day mommy, which was really, really cool. Mm -hmm. And it's called, cool. it was called the footprints to mommy and daddy's heart. That's really, that's really cute. I, that I mean, and and that in itself, you know, to have a gift like that, that that's going to last last a lifetime because you you can. I mean, a lot of parents are getting molds of their children's feet and hands when they're little because they don't stay little for long. They they grow up into eating, drinking, going crazy machines that just kind of just you know blossom before the world. You turn your head and it's over, and it's like man. So, so having that moment in time for parents is, is, is so awesome. Um, I'm glad you got a chance to do that. We've got a little bit of, I know we're kind of on a, a bit of a time constraint, but um, I actually want to get into something that I, I don't know. So what, 
so how do your parents feel about, you know, what you do and how do they react to, you know, what you're doing and that kind of thing? What are the, are they supportive? I mean, what's your support system like? They find it to be very amazing because as a child, you know, no one had any hope in me. I didn't think I could do anything. And now we being with CP, you have to prove yourself, it seems like, to the world. And now that when I got into this, you know, they were like, oh, my God, you really want to do something like this? I'm like, absolutely. I love kids. I, I have no patience for really adults too much, but I have plenty <laughs> of patience for kids. Yeah, I I, uh, I don't have. Uh, sometimes I don't have patience for adult either. I, sometimes I don't have patience for myself, and I'm, you know, I'm up there. I'm like, I want to go back to my younger days. I like it. I can hide, you know, and be. I can get away with things. <laughs> so, um, so as far as like when you, so you mentioned, you know, people thinking that that you would not be able, you know, you would not be able to do anything with CP. How did you adapt to that? I mean, when, were you ever at the point of, or were your parents ever at the point of, you know, I don't know if, if, if you can do this or, you know, how did you overcome that? I just put my mind to it. And I was like, I'm not going to let my CP stop me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to work to my best ability. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and sometimes that's how you have to be because you've got to decide, look, um, you know, I'm going to do this. This is what I want to do. When you when you put your passion and your heart into something, you're either going to do it or you're not. And I think I, I can tell your passion to children because I can see that you're, you know, working with them all the time and things like that. Now, you're going to school, too, as well. Yes, I am. I go to Post University. Okay. And, and how in the world do you manage that and work – uh, you know, 10 hour days and, you know, find time to study. And how do you, how do you manage all that? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I, I guess, I mean, it does wipe me out because a lot mm -hmm. of times I do have assignments that are due on Wednesdays, but the mm -hmm. rest are mainly all during the week. But Wednesdays, you know, like, it's like Oh my God! No, it's the middle of the week. I gotta hurry up. I gotta do my work, but then I also gotta focus on my kids. So mm -hmm. It is now, hard. Now, what are you? What are you majoring? Majoring in, in college? Early childhood education. Mm -hmm. And and I mean, how has that in your current career? How has that helped you? Because you've you've gone to school and you've been going to school for a little bit and then took some time off. How has that helped you in your current career? Uh, to be honest with you, not much because I learn on hands-on learning versus mm -hmm. over the computer and stuff like that. And right now everything is on the computer, so it's like a little mm -hmm. bit more um, complicated. Well, I mean, we've got some comments here. I want to get these uh, get these comments in. Cindy says, hey. Josh says, hey. Crystal says, hey. Shana says, hello. And Nikki says, hello. So hello to everybody tuning into the show. Now, you talked a little bit about your learning and how, you, how you're how you able to learn different things. I kind of want to go into that a little bit. We, we had done a show before where we talked about different styles of learning. And some people are audio learners and some people are visual learners and some people are hands-on and some people have a combination. There's one thing in particular that I like that you said, you know, you said, I understand things better when I write it out. And you also understand things better when it's read to you because you can comprehend it easier. How did you find that out? Was that when you were in school and it just kind of clicked or what, what happened with that? No, because since I have dyslexia as well, mm -hmm. like I tend to see, um, Letter, some letters backwards, like a mirror image. Okay. So I understand it better, like when someone reads to me, like I'm not stupid or not that I could understand it, but it's just easier for someone to read it to me and then I could understand it better. That's like I remember the, the, the test we used to take in school. I could read them and I could read them fine, but when I heard it coming from someone else, or the voice of someone else reading it, I could I could get into it more, and I I could I guess I could study it more intently. Like 
it just, I get it, you know, and, and you all have to, we all have ways of doing things. We have to find out what works best for us. Sometimes, you know, with technology now, they have the systems that read back to you and you can do it in different voices. I always like the Morgan Freeman voice or the James Earl Jones voice or one of those, you know, and I want to get those and just have them read, read back to me. But I honestly can, can tell where you're coming from with CP, especially, I think the audio part, we, I want, at least I want to say that I'm receptive to audio much, much more than visual. There are, now I can see something and memorize it, but when it comes to reading a paragraph or understanding a story or something like that, when it's a lot of detail, I, I'm better with, with um, audio learning to where I hear it. That's why I love audio books. I love, I, I don't like to read, you know, the right, cause it's, it just, but when I hear it, I can, you know, and the, the, the um, different, uh, motives of the storyteller really make it better. Cindy says this, it's always nice that we can show others that we can do more than they thought we could do. And I, and that's why I left that up there, you know, with, with all that you've got going on and all that you've got going on in your life, it's got to be, I would think, a, a giant sense of accomplishment for you just to excel well and do many things, not just one. That's, you know, you were exceeding expectations. And I think the expectations that, that people put on us, we want to fly past them. At least I know I do because mm -hmm. I do. we are, we're, we're people too. And I think that's just, I think that's awesome. Um, it, 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 when, when I first met you and you told me that you were, you, you were a daycare teacher, I'm like, Oh, wow. I'm like, and I, and I know sometimes that place is, full and they're <laughs> running all over the place and i'm like she's over here and now she's over there and she's over here and now she's over there and i'm like um yeah i'm just gonna sit here in the middle of the room put leashes on every single one of them and then just <laughs> that way i'll have control <laughs> trust trust me i've thought about that <laughs> um what they actually what? have kid leashes you know, I, and I want to ask you about, and all kidding aside, when I first saw those, I was appalled by them. I said, how can you put your child on a leash? It's not a dog. But when you have a disability and you can't run, you got to do what you got to do. And if that leash presents, prevents that child from running in the street and you yank them back like a yo-yo, I that child would rather be a yo-yo than a flat pancake. And I, I, I wouldn't want to see him get, get hurt. How do you feel about the kid leashes? Um, I think it's, um, how do you say it properly? Um, unheard of, but also I remember when I was a kid, I've had one of those. Mm hmm. So, I mean, like, I guess now at this day and age, everything is better. So, yeah, why not? I mean, I, I, I can see I can see the benefit of why um, you would want to have one of those. If your child is active and most one to three-year-olds have so much energy, they could fill up a rocket and still have time to eat peanut butter and jelly and get it all over you. But, I mean, I just, I, 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 I think, you know, for time, I could see why some parents will have it. But a parent with a, my, my other friend who's in a power chair has two kids and he has leashes for both of them. And he told me, he said, I cannot get out of my chair and get on the floor to pick up my son. He said, so I have to do and I have to mold, you know, what works best for me. And I think making the world adapt to us and how we live and how we work. Having a disability is, is 10 times different than, than being so-called able-bodied because I guarantee you able-bodied people make things easier too. A potholder is a potholder for a pan that's hot. You think about it, a leash for a kid, you thought, man, that's weird. Why would you put a leash on a kid? If that leash saves that kid's life, I'll put two of them on there. If that if that's going to save my son or daughter and make sure that they're okay and I can get to them fast enough, 
to where it's that because sometimes you've only got a split second. You've talked about it. You turn your head for a minute and they're gone. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it's it's definitely a it's definitely a, 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 a tough thing. Now, the, the one of the one of the last things I, I want to get into with the last, you know, 15, 20 minutes that we've got, because I know you're you're um, short on time. You are writing a book, and when you when we talked about this, I was like, "This is going to be amazing." Um, and it's the the child uh, the the ch the child with the superpowers, correct? The hidden superpowers is that? What the heck's going on? Uh oh, the child with the secret powers. Um, tell me about how that came. Uh, um, tell me about how that came about. Well. Well, um, how the book really came about is I based it off basically um, a disabled person, disabled child, but they're not from our planet, and their planet that they're from, I'll give little details, is Starlit Planet. They come here, and their world is totally upside down. Mm -hmm. Now, where they could fly because they couldn't walk on their planet, they come here, they can't fly, so they have to use a chair. And they mm -hmm. find people, you know, different things to help them. It's 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 an amazing book. So how did you how did you come up with such an amazing idea to write this? Um, what was your when did you decide? You know what? I'm gonna because that is a that's an awesome concept, and I and I. I waited. I didn't want you to tell me about this when we were off camera because I, I I know just a very little bit. I know you drew the pictures. I know you wrote the book out. But what an awesome com concept, Kim Kim Kimberly, to to come up with on their planet. They're able to fly, and then to come here and you know not be able to fly because of gravity, and then have to use a chair. What an awesome concept! How did you come up with that? I mean, did you or when did you decide to do that? Um, it actually, I actually thought of this a few months ago. It's been a few months in the work, in the working. The actual book is, was supposed to come out the 15th, but because of um, the COVID situation going on and, you know, with the whole pandemic and everything, everything is a little behind schedule. So hopefully we'll be able to have it up and running by the middle of April. That is, that is but so my, awesome. my kids. My kids are my, but my kids are my number one reason why I wrote this book. Mm -hmm. They gave me that inspiration and thought of doing it. Now you actually, you're going to have this as a, you're wanting to have this as a handwritten book. Is that, what are your, what are your details behind the book? Is it going to be digital? Is it going to be handwritten? Where is the book going to be available? Um, the book is going to be handwritten out for, because I don't want to do anything digital. I don't want to feel like I'm copying off of other authors or illustrators and stuff like that. I don't want to do that. None of that. So I want to make it especially handwritten, but I want to put a special gloss on it where they won't be able to change any of the writings and try to make it their own. That is an awesome, awesome thing. We were we were talking about the uh, using the the uh, the child uh, the safety uh, wrist harnesses to get the right name out there, not just leashes. But I, I thank you, Miss Winnie. She she laughed at when I said leashes. So it's it's child safety harness. Make sure wrist harness. We get that out there. Um, Crystal was talking about that. I want to read this. I used it with Alyssa. Uh, with pride, my child uh, not going to get hurt because of my disability slows me down. When you're a mom, you do what you've got to do to keep them safe. Yeah, that's kind of just what we were talking about. And yep. you, you know, you've got to make the decision to to do what's right for you. Uh, JP Jackson says <laughs> sci-fi elements. I'm hooked already. So he likes the fact that your book has a little bit of sci-fi and futuristic things to it. Um, and you know then, that's and and mm -hmm. and it's going to be turned into a pop up book. Is one of the things I haven't said it to anybody. 
you know, and, I, and I've got to tell you, putting all of these nuances into this book, and that's and you're not copying anybody by writing it and and and, and doing it your way and making it so unique. Some some children with with CP, especially when you're writing a child's book, to be able to feel the pictures, to be able to touch the pictures, that's going to give them an extraordinary dimension of themselves. You know, they can put themselves in that story and say, well, you know, if this person can from another planet, if, if this alien from another planet can do it, you know, I can do it too. And it's going to give them that 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 future to hold on to that is just remarkable what a gosh what a concept that is but there's a thing with the story it has a twist behind it when when they're in their planet they're an alien but when they come here they transformed into a human but wow. they still got a secret power behind them well, I am, I am looking forward to, to getting the book at 39 years old and just seeing how it comes out. Um, are you looking at, at Amazon? Are you looking at, you know, putting it in bookstores? What are you looking at doing to, to get it out there? Probably Barnes and Nobles um, or maybe Amazon, things like that. But um, at first, it's going to only go to certain people. Mm hmm mm hmm Okay. Now you and you said too. You drew all the. You've drawn all the artwork and um, you know things like that. How did the artwork come about? When you decided to do the artwork, was that from some of your past? Did you think about? Did you put elements of yourself in the book when you wrote it? I'm sorry, repeat yourself. You came in. Sure. Weird. Um, when you when you decided to write the book and when you decided to draw the pictures. Did you put elements of yourself in the book when you yes. Yes, decided to write it? Why? Yes, I did. Because, like I said, being born with CP makes you different. And people don't view you the way you view yourself. So I wanted to put that little bit into the book. That's, that's awesome. So... So to, to go through this and to see, I, I can't wait till this comes out. I mean, I mean, just the just the originality of, of what this is going to be. It's not now. It, it is it particularly long. I mean, how? I mean, as far as how are you? How many? I mean, is it going to have chapters or? No, no, no. It's going to okay. only have like up to ten pages max. Okay, so you. Did you do that because you want to make it easy to read, or what? What was the thought behind only ten pages? Um, because it's a children's book, and it's also going to be my first book written. So I wanted to see how it goes first, and which I know this is going to be a fantastic book, of course, because I wrote it. <laughs> Did you? And and what do your parents think? They don't know about it yet. Really? So you haven't told your parents about the book? Oh wow! So it it's a an exclusive on 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 Facebook Live when they if they see this they're gonna they're gonna be like what? <laughs> wow! My so, mom has Facebook Live, so Facebook, so yes, she'll know. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, I, I want to ask one more question about the book. Um, what do you think when children read it? What impression do you want kids to take away from the book when they when they read it? When they look at the book and look at the pictures and read the story, what what impression do you want them to take away from it? I want to um, I want them to feel like just because I was born different or somebody's different, you don't treat them differently. You treat them with respect, just like you would do anybody else. And and do you feel that this book is going to help help accomplish that? I think so. I I, I could see so. this. I could see this going all around the world to different countries because there are so many children. There are people that that don't even understand their disability because they've been withheld. They've been sheltered. They've been dug down. This book can change lives just from just from the story that you've put out. I mean that's. 
the potential of, of, you know, I know you said when the book first comes out, you know, you want it to go to certain people, but to, to, to have it, you know, when a child gets something that they understand or they like, or they can connect with or relate to, they light up like little Christmas trees. And it's just, you know, to see them happy, but to know that you accomplished, you know, that some of that happiness, how does that make you feel? Makes me feel amazing out of this world. So if you are, when you launch this book, you know, and you, you do the, the, the six to 10 pages or however many comes out, are you looking at, you know, once it comes out, do you want to do more? Do you want to, you know, have you thought about a sequel to it? Have you thought about doing a longer version? Um, because. I want to see how it goes first. Okay. Okay. I know with the, I think with the pop-up part, I think that's, that's an amazing part for kids with, I mean, because CP itself affects as, as you know, it can affect every muscle in the body and kids with, with vision problems mm -hmm. can't quite see the words, but can fill the pictures and, and have the pictures pop up. That's going to put such an imaginative spin on, on the book itself. What a, what an awesome job. What an awesome thought. But it's going to be the picture. Mm -hmm. The pictures are going to be holographic, though. Like a holographic type of thing. Okay. Now, so so you're going to add the pop-up element later on to, to try to, you know, just to, to, to you know, add to it or? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So... Um, and you said you're you're hopefully going to try to get it finished by by April with the pandemic and everything. Yes. Okay. Well, definitely, you know, keep us posted and definitely let us know um, where you know where it's going to be and when you launch it. You know, we'll we'll, we'll definitely have you back again because I know time was short today. Um, but I, I think that you're doing amazing things in the community. I think that, you know, going to school and having a job and writing a book and, you know, managing your time well, it, it's tough for anybody to do. But, you know, having cerebral palsy on top of it and, and you know, kicking butt and taking names, that's, you know, you're showing the world that you can do what you want to do. And I think that's powerful. Um, if you if you could give a message to your your your, you know, your little self to your childlike self. Um, what would, what would you say to your younger self if you had the opportunity to talk to younger Kim? What would you tell her? Uh, don't give up on life because anything is possible. Mm -hmm. Anything you put your mind to, you could do. Okay. Okay. And and how do you think? How do you think she would receive that? Being, being, you know, what you've gone through and everything that you've gone through, how do you think she would receive that? Um, I don't know if she would really understand it at first, but, you know, as you speak and think about it, you could, that she would get it. Okay. So, you know, you, you talked about your book, you've talked about school, you've talked about, um, you know, uh, your support system and your 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 mom and dad. Um, you've talked about your career. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with us um, before we before we end today? Well, also we talked about my book. We talked about everything else, but also I wanted to let people know that I was in a movie in two thousand and five and made as an extra. And I, I, I and wanted you to. I wanted you to bring that up. I didn't honestly, want to. <laughs> Go ahead. Didn't think. Didn't think that that would. I never thought that would happen. And how it happened was, I just went to play um, lottery for my mom, and Robert Stone Jr. actually approached me, and asked mm -hmm. me if I, I want to be an extra in the movie. And wow, it. Is amazing. The movie is called The Guide to Recognizing Your Saints. It came out in 2005 and it, it's a rated on movie, but it's amazing. 
Okay. Like it's a kick butt movie. Okay. So now this was this was in Queens, right? So he was actually in Queens when when you Correct. were, and he he just approached you um, about being in the movie. What was that? What was that like for you? What was your first thought? I was honestly, I thought it was a game, and I was like, I was like, really, me in a movie? Why? Mm -hmm. What's the name? The movie's and what, what called you... A Guide to Recognizing Your Saints. Okay, one more time. That's A Guide to Recognizing Your Saints, you said? Yes, A Guide to Recognizing Your Saints. All right, so hopefully that, that clears it up for you there, Cindy. Where is it available on Netflix, or do you know where that movie is available it is, at? It has it's Netflix, YouTube, um... That's all I think right now. I'm not sure, but okay. I know for a fact it is on Netflix and YouTube. Okay, well, we, um, I'll definitely check it out. Um, and I know, I know, I know our viewers will today too. And those listening on Let Let Go Radio, that is um, a guide to recognizing your saints. And and you said it was Rob, Robert uh, Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. Shot. Yes, Robert Downey Jr., Shia LaBeouf, Channing Tatum. Wow! So we so had a few famous people in the movie. Wow, man! Now, when you when you did the movie, what was what was the acting like for you, I man? What was the to to be able to 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 be in a scene and to actually be in the movie? What was that like for you? It was. Honestly, it was amazing. Like, I didn't even have to pretend to be anything that I'm not. You know, my hair was blonde in the movie. I had a white lifeguard shirt and yellow shorts. And honestly, I was going to change and put on something better. Do like normal. Stay, stay where you are. It's summertime. We need a lifeguard in this movie. Mm-hmm. Not meaning I jumped in and saved anybody, but. <laughs> so they wanted to have you as you are, and that 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 had to feel great too. Um, and you said that was done in two thousand five. Now, have you gotten a lot of recognition for being in the movie? Have pe have people come up to you and go, "I, I saw you in you know uh, um, a guide to recognizing your saints." That's I mean, what has that happened? I still have it up to today going on. Uh huh. And what's that like for you? And I, I love the fame, you know, and stuff like that. I'm not gonna lie about it. It's it's awesome when people approach you and be like, "Hey, why don't you, you're in that movie." I'm like, "Uh huh." And part two is gonna be coming out soon. We're gonna be filming part two of it. Okay. And are you going to be in that? Oh yes, I am. That's awesome. So, so you now, you're now getting into acting and being in movies and all. Of, man, that 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 throws me for a loop because you go from, you know, author to 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 daycare teacher to being in a movie to you know, you just do this this you know, large circle of things and it just continues to grow for you. So. That's awesome. So this one, what um, what is the movie about? Can you can you tell what the movie is about? Okay, what the movie is about? The first one mm -hmm. is it takes place in New York, and basically it's um an Italian family, and with a son that's a total bad boy and kind of gets into trouble. And you know, it's it's really really good. I'm not gonna ruin it for my viewers that want to see it, mm -hmm. or on like a radio that want to see it. But let's just put it this way: it's a really really good movie. Okay. Well, I'm sure we'll check it out. So you know, and and you know, good luck with with um with this the sequel coming up to it. I hope that you know everything works out for you. Maybe you'll have. You know more than you know. You'll have some a couple of scenes in this one, and and getting again to uh, is it is it on? Uh, we got a question. Is it on DVD? 
Do you know if it's on DVD or not? Yes, it is. Yes, it okay. is. So it is on DVD, Cindy. You can you can uh, you may be able to rent it or or get it at a video store if they they carry it. You know, back back from two thousand five. So definitely, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have you. But do you know when? Uh, did, have they said when two is coming out? Is it in is it in pre production? Do you know or when that's gonna happen? Yeah, we're we're gonna start filming. We're gonna hopefully. Start filming in may or june may or june okay so that's coming out hopefully this year and and we will definitely keep uh keep our eyes peeled and i know i will um to look for you in that so that's you know and, and that opens a lot of doors for you you know in in have you have you thought about an acting career is that something you even thought about i mean when that happened no, to be honest with you, no. It just caught me off guard, and I, I was, and I got paid five grand for the movie wow. for being an extra. That's that's pretty awesome. If, uh, if they need another extra, throw them, throw them my way. I'll I'll, I'll get in there too. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about the lifeguard shirt, but I'll figure something out. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. You could um, be topless. <laughs> that, that's going to be awesome for you. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. Um, and again, that you said that's May or June. And um, I, we will definitely be checking you out. Well, I mean, I is there anything else that you want to share with our viewers? A final word, a final message um, of inspiration for them? Um, anything else that you want to um, share? Well, also, I'm reopening my website of uh, Kimiku's, which is a jewelry website. Okay, now you As actually well. had talked to me about that a little bit. Now, how, so are you, is it handmade jewelry? Or are you doing, what kind of handmade. jewelry are you doing? I'm doing a lot of lanyard. Um, I'm taking back old school. I'm mm -hmm. doing a lot of lanyard, um, mm -hmm. keychains and necklaces and a lot of things that go in the dark. Um, his and her bracelet, relationship bracelets, okay. doing it all, made of leather. And, and is that, you said Kimiku's, is that one word? Spell that out for me. Uh, it's K-I-M-M-Y-C-O-O, -O, um, per Apostrophe S. Okay. And is that dot com or is that dot org or? Yeah. It's no, so it's www.kibikus.com. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you guys, um, you heard it there. You can also, um, you know, put that in the comments when you when you go into to Facebook. You can actually put it in the comments as well. And that's uh, kibikus.com. So we'll definitely go check that out and um, get your jewelry site back up. That's cool. That's so you've got so many things that you're doing. That's that's awesome to have that many things, you know, in production and to have that many things. That shows that you continue to, um, you know, you continue to strive for what you want, and you should. Um, you should not box yourself in and just do one or two things. You do. You know what you want to do you go where you want to go that's an awesome job and i look forward to to everything that happens for you um if you would do me a favor and tell our viewers how they can if if you want to share any of your uh social media do, do you have do you want people to be able to contact you to ask you about the book and things like that if you do or would share how they can contact mm -hmm. you yeah Yes, you could contact me on my Facebook page, which is Kimberly Johnson at Facebook.com. Um, that's the only media site that I have at the moment, but okay. feel free to um, ask me anything, request me as a friend, I'd be more happy to request you back. Um, feel free to ask me anything you want. Okay, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna work with Kim and help her get a YouTube set up, and I'm all, also gonna help her get an Instagram set up so we can actually get her site out there. And and because I'm I'm working with her offline oh. a lot, 
So I'm gonna help. Oh, sorry, with that. I do have Instagram. Okay, so I you do have, have Instagram. Instagram. It's Kimmy Koo. Yes, it's Kimmy Koo's 1985. Okay, and it's spelled the same way, K-I-M-M-Y. And what's the? It's C-O-O apostrophe S. You said. Yes, 1985. Okay. No, no apostrophe on this one. It's Kimmy Koo's 1985. All right, so no apostrophe on this one, but for the website, it does have the apostrophe there. All right, so we will definitely um, get that out, and I'll put that in the comments once I'm once I'm uh, able to type in the comments there. Uh, Crystal, if you want to drop that in there, um, you can for us um, if I before I get to it. Um, and we've got a couple people asking about uh, the website again. Can you can you mention the website one more time? The, the domain name it's for that? W, it's Kimiku's. It's www.kimmycoo-s.com. Okay. So there's the website for you, Crystal. If you want to put that in there for me, that'd be great. And also uh, check out her Instagram and her um, Facebook page. I want to thank you for being on the show, Kim. It's awesome. Um, I really appreciate you taking your time out to, to be with me today. Um, we'll definitely have you back when we've got a little bit more time. I know I know time got away from us today because <laughs> you've got to take care of the little ones. But um, thank you for being part of the show. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, guys, if you want to be a guest on the show, you can reach me at uh, carterdj85 at gmail.com. Please, in the subject, put guest on my CP does not define me and uh, uh, send me a bio about yourself and your story so I can actually view that and a way to contact you. You can reach me on in, uh, Instagram at my CP does not define me. Uh, you can reach me on Twitter, my CP does not define me at Minion Sports. You can reach me on YouTube, my CP does not define me. You can also reach me on YouTube at Chairmaster Games. That's uh, a space in between each word and also worth the weight cooking with DJ Carter. And finally, my blog, uh, CarterDJ85 at Wix.com. So you can reach me there too. And most of all, I say, if you can't be good, be bad, but be good at it. This is D to the J with a roll away. Tune in next week at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for My CP Does Not Define Me, episode 47. We will see you next week. Guys, take care. Like I said, if you can't be good, be bad, but be good at it. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in, and we will see you next week. All right, everybody. That's going to do it for this week's episode of My CP Does Not Define Me. But don't worry. You can catch us again next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on WW www.letgoradio.net and on Facebook and YouTube at my CP does not define me. Remember, I'm your host, D to the J with the roll away. And if you can't be good, be bad, but be good at it. We'll see you next week. <laughs>